Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB test automation engineer certification. We are in chapter seven talking about verifying the test automation solutions. And as a part of it, uh, we are moving on to the next segment that is 7.1.3, identify where test automation produces unexpected result, where we will be mainly be concerned about how exactly analysis of failures can take place. On failures, it is very much important for us to conduct a root cause analysis. Indeed, it is very much important at the same time for us to understand that what are the components we should evaluate when it comes to the root cause analysis of any failure. Because the components may have any of these uh, failures related to that and there could be a number of reasons why these root causes could lead us to a variety of different components which are contributing to the entire test solution. So it is an art to understand that what important parameters and components should be evaluated in order to identify the root cause analysis and come to the conclusion that what exactly is the fix required to make a task run again. So to, in order to understand that, how exactly we can identify these components is what we are looking at. So let's get into that. Of course, uh, when it comes to the test automation, uh, it can produce unexpected result over a period of time. And of course, when a test script uh, fails or passes unexpectedly, the root cause analysis must be performed. This will include inspecting test logs, performance data, setup and teardown of the scripts as well. It is also helpful to execute a few test isolated intermittent failures are more difficult to be analyzed. Of course, uh, the very first important thing is if you think there's a part of it which is not working fine, it would be important to isolate them. In fact, we have discussed this in our previous tutorials also, that it is okay to bring some of the tests out and independently run them to see that if they are continuing to fail independently or they are working together and then failing, right? Because as far as we isolate some of the tests which are doubtful enough that these are the reasons why the failure might be happening, for example, at a particular point the failure happened, then I know which test was being executed at this point of time when the failure occurred. And if I just put it isolated and try to run it independently and see that if it actually has the problem, then I'm clear with the test case is failing, right? But if in case the test case in independent is passing, then I understand there's something else which is making that test fail. Now I'm very much clear that it's not with the test script, it's not with the test data, it's more with any other component. So that is where it is very crucial for us to isolate some of these tests when the failure happens to start with the very first approach. And at the same time, the second thing to understand here is that intermittent issues are very difficult to analyze because we don't have any proofs for them and we do not have any kind of reproducibility to understand why that failure would have happened. Further to add here, of course, the defect can be in the test case, the SUT, the framework, the hardware, or the network itself. Monitoring system resources may yield clues for the root cause. The test log file analyze, analysis of the test cases, the SUT and the TAF can help identify the root cause of the defect. Debugging may also be necessary to aid in identifying the root cause may require support from the test analyst, business analyst, developers, or system engineers. Again, as we do understand that uh, there are multiple elements contributing to this, we may require support from the other professionals, uh, other stakeholders of the group, because they might be contributing us from understanding that whether this failure is actually a failure or not. Developers may help us with the object changes or many other stakeholders would contribute systematically. Because again, a design change would have taken place and they would help us to understand what could be the side effect of such changes. That is where the stakeholders may contribute in the debugging process or root cause analysis process to help you understand the same. So it is crucial that you look forward to understand what are your stakeholders who can contribute to this particular process. Finally, to add here, of course, uh, verify if all the assertions are pre in place. Missing assertions may also result in inconclusive test results. Just a cautionary message that when you are doing these analysis, it is important to cross check that if your assertions are in place, because by not having appropriately being placed, these assertions will not yield the right result what we might be looking forward to. We should not forget that assertions are not only for verification, but also more of like checking in an event that till here things worked fine. So they can be very well utilized for all other purposes. Further to add, we are moving on to the next segment of this. And the next segment we have for you is, of course, 7.1.4, explain how static analysis can aid test automation code quality. 
And indeed, uh, the static analysis uh, is an activity which helps us to conduct the code review. And code review is a very critical task in the life cycle, which helps us to identify coding related anomalies, especially maintainability can be easily analyzed with help of this tool. So it is important to understand how static analysis tool can help us to do the same. So let's get into that. The very first segment here we are talking about is the introduction to static code analysis and how exactly it contributes to the inspections or making the SUT and test automation solution work better. So static code analysis can help find vulnerabilities and defects in the program code. This can include the SUT or the TAF itself. Automated scans can inspect code to mitigate the risk. This provides a, a review of the SUT for defects and ensures code quality standards are being met and applied. This can also be considered a proactive defect detection technique, and this plays a significant role in DevSecOps, which basically means development security practices or secured coding practices, implementations. So basically these uh, basically implement and help you understand that how coding has been done with their clean practices at the same time secure coding practices have been followed throughout the code. Further to add here, of course, these scans occur early in the SDLC via the pipeline to provide development teams with immediate feedback. We can correlate all those things what we have covered in the foundation. In the foundation, we told you that development can have these automated as a part of the DevOps pipeline. And as a part of DevOps pipeline, the reason why we automate maximum things is to get early and frequent feedback. Every single time a code is checked in, it would be statically analyzed for its cleanness and secure coding practices to make sure that there are no loopholes left out to be merged with the other code. And that's where it becomes very important for us to understand the need of it. Further to add here, the output regarding defects is usually categorized as critical, high, medium, or low in terms of their severity, so that development teams have the ability to prioritize which defects they choose to fix. Certain static analysis tools also have the ability to provide suggested code fixes to address the defects that they will find. It will also be present uh, development teams. It will present the development team with a copy of copy of uh, offending lines of code and other offer a possible remedy for developers to implement. Indeed, uh, it's not a completely mandatory thing, but optional, yet important for understanding that static analysis tools may have additional capabilities that they may let you to go ahead with uh, given, giving recommendations that which part of the code should be rectified and what could be the remedy of that in order to fix the problem and what is the suggested outcome. For example, there could be secure coding practices as an auto suggestion which can be given to you and you may apply them as and when you see those messages. So further to add here, of course, additionally, these tools also aid test automation engineers by measuring quality, suggesting areas where to comment the code, improving code design for optimized resource handling and uh, removing poor library codes which is pretty straightforward to understand that given that you are using a smart tool, the smart tool can have additional features as well. But again, this is not completely mandatory. You should understand whatever static analysis tool we might be using. It uh, may have these options or may not have. So this is just an extended capability, not necessary that every static analysis tool can have, but it's just that if you have these features, you can certainly reduce a lot of your effort in utilizing the static analysis for supporting the automation as well. Further to add here, of course, the next segment we are talking about is the continuation on the same. And uh, as test automation tools use programming languages, there is a risk that inadequate test automation code can be introduced to the SDLC. As a simple example, a common practice when automating tests is to have a username and password. It is conceivable that a test automation engineer can incorrectly include the password in the plain text within one or more of the test script. So indirectly, all we are trying to refer here is that as test automation engineers also make use of programming languages, it is very important for us to adhere to the programming standards and protocols at the same time. So it is important for us to include the information which is required for us to run the test. And it might happen that you may have a human error where you might use information incorrectly or sometime not in the format what it desires to have or even the third option that is, you may use different values in different parts of the script, which could result into failures and may require you to analyze them. So that's where, again, the static analysis tool could be of great help. 
Further to add here, of course, uh, static analysis tool can benefit test automation code. They can be used to analyze the test automation code for security violations, such as plain text password with the code. Static analysis tools can support many programming languages, including those used by the test automation software. So indeed, it's just as good as saying that the way the developers do the programming, the test automation engineers are writing the automation script. So the tools, what we've used as we are using programming language itself, we can use those tools like static analysis tools to pretty much identify our anomalies. And anomalies related to uh, code, code reviews are certainly the variables which are declared but never used or variables which are used but never declared, infinite loop, secure coding practices, or uh, variables which might not be cleaning the memory at the end of the day. So all these can be easily identified with respect to that. So it is very crucial for us to understand the need and support of the static analysis being conducted for the automation scripts as well. Finally, to talk about, of course, uh, therefore, it is imperative that the test automation engineer extend the best practices of scanning the code to also include test automation code. Even though the test automation code is not necessarily deployed with the overall software, there are clearly potential vulnerabilities if the password was discovered in an accompanying automation script. So plain text and passwords play a very vital role. So you may not have to enter the passwords in any of the code, which is very straightforward. That means say, for example, if my password is uh, admin at the rate one to three, writing it as admin at the one to three is what we are referring to as plain text. But on the other side, we should have secure coding practices, which includes the encrypted value to be fed in when we use the password values. So it's just being tried that how exactly a static analysis tool can uh, be used for automation as well, not only to identify the anomalies, but also embed the secure coding practices when it comes to writing automation scripts as well. So that's pretty much what we had from the chapter seven, and we shall be looking forward next to the sample questions in the next tutorial. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.